The new use hook in React is incredible. Not only is it completely different than every other React hook because it ignores every single rule that the other hooks have to follow, but it also makes all the boilerplate code that you write when dealing with asynchronous code something of the past, which I love because asynchronous code is everywhere. Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle and my job is to simplify the web for you so you can start building your dream project sooner. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use the use hook to take this entire component and reduce it to about two lines of code. That's how powerful this hook is. Now, the very first thing that you need to understand is that this hook is rather new and it's only under the experimental version of React. So you need to make sure you're using the experimental version of React and React DOM in order to start trying out and using this hook. And because it is experimental, it means things could change. And if things do change, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't let me update a video, but I have a completely free React hook simplified course that covers this hook as well as every other hook. And if anything changes about this hook, I'll make sure to update the video in that course. So you're gonna have the latest information. Now the next thing I want to talk about is just what this base project is we're looking at here. I have a really simple app component here that has a URL and I have these three radio buttons at the top that allow me to change that URL. As you can see I briefly get a loading state before it moves me on and actually renders out the data. And the way that all that has happening is inside this data component, we just have a really simple fetch request. This is about as simple as a fetch request can get inside of React. As you can see, we have our state for loading our error as well as our data. And then inside of our fetch here, we're making sure that we get the data to set it. We're setting any error if we get it. And then finally, we're changing our loading to be false. So it shows a loading state. If there's an error, it'll show the error. And if everything is successful, it'll show my data down here, as you can see. Now, this is a bit cumbersome and dealing with anything asynchronous, such as promises in React has always been a huge pain, but the use hook solves all of those problems for us. For example, we can get rid of all of these use states. We don't need them anyway. We can import use here. We can also get rid of our use effect because we don't need that at all. So we get rid of all of this. The only thing that we're gonna need to keep is our actual fetch request to get our data. So this is right here is the only thing we need and the rest of this we can completely get rid of. So all we're doing is a simple fetch request and this returns to us a promise that is either going to have our data or it's going to have some type of error. So what I can do is I can wrap that inside my use hook. So the use hook just takes a promise as being passed to it. So I pass this fetch promise and this fetch promise returns to me either a JSON data or an error. And I'm gonna set that to a variable called data, just like that. And the way that this hook works is very similar to if you had done something like this, where I said await this fetch, where it's going to give me the data or it's going to throw an error that I have to catch somewhere else. That's pretty much exactly what the use hook does. So you can just think about use as almost like awaiting something. And if there's an error, it'll throw it, which you need to catch somewhere else, or you're going to get the successful data back. So I can get rid of all of my loading and error states here, and I can just return this one pre-tag. And as you can see, I've essentially reduced this component to two simple lines. That's all it takes to do this asynchronous code. Now there is one other thing we need to do though, is we need to handle the loading and the error state. And we actually need to do that inside of our app component here. And that's by using something called React Suspense. Suspense is all about doing asynchronous things in React. So we can take this and wrap it in this suspense component. So we can just wrap our child component in this suspense component. And this takes a fallback. And this fallback is going to be rendered anytime we're in a loading state. So for example, I can just have a div that says loading. And that is going to be my fallback. Otherwise, once I'm done loading everything, it's going to render out my data. So if we go over to the data, this use hook is what triggers the suspense to be loading. So whenever my promise is not currently resolved, so when it's currently fetching data, it'll render this fallback state. And once the data comes back, if it was successful, it's going to render out this right here, essentially everything inside my suspense. So if we give this quick save, you can see as I toggle between my states, it gives me that loading text real quick and it lets me go between all these different states. And you can really see this if I slow down my page a little bit by throttling my network speed. So I come over here, go to network, and I just wanna make sure this is a little bit slower so I can say slow 3G. You can see when I click, we get that loading text showing up and then my data comes in, it's processed, and then it's going to show it to me on the screen right here. So it's really cool how this happens. Now, when it comes to actually catching errors, you need to use something called an error boundary. And that's really common when you're working with suspense. So I'll show you an error boundary example here. This is really straightforward. All it has is some really basic state for if there is an error and then what the error is. And then here, all we're doing is we're getting our derived state from that error. And then down here, we're saying, if we have an error, we render this prop called fallback. Otherwise we render what's ever inside the error boundary. And this works pretty much exactly the same as suspense. So we can wrap this inside of our new component called error boundary. So the children here is just going to be all of this code. And if any of this code throws an error, our error boundary is going to catch that error by using this get derived state from error. That's essentially a built in thing inside of React. Whenever there's an error, it's gonna call this pass along the error. And we're just saying we have an error to render the fallback. We just pass in any fallback we want. 
our case, let's say that our fallback is just a div that says error. There we go. So now if there's an error in our code, it'll render this instead of rendering nothing at all. So just to show you what this looks like, let's go into here. We're going to remove our fetch and we're just going to say promise dot reject. We'll just pass in just a string, whatever we want. And now you can see it says error because we had an error in our promise. It rejected that bubbled up to our error boundary and it's rendering our fallback, which is just this text that says error. Now this alone already makes the use hook incredible. I mean, look at this. We've cleaned up our code so much. This is so much shorter. And all we had to do is add a couple extra lines inside of here to make it actually work. But it goes a step further in how useful this actually is. Let's bring this back to what we had before with our fetch. I'm going to pass in a variable here that says should fetch just like that. And I only want to actually run this fetch if should fetch is true. This is generally a big problem in React when you're dealing with hooks because you can't wrap them inside if statements or anything like that. But the use hook is different. All of the rules that you know about hooks when it comes to wrapping them in if statements and stuff like that, throw all that out the window because the use hook can be used pretty much anywhere you want. It can be wrapped in a for loop, wrapped in an if statement, it doesn't matter at all. It can even be after like a conditional return if you want. So what we can do is we can say if should fetch, then we're going to do this code down here. Otherwise our data will be something else. So by default, let's just set our data to equal default data, just like that. And if we should fetch, then we're going to get the data. Otherwise, we're just going to render out our default data as some JSON. So if we save, you can see by default, it just renders our default data. But if we tell it to do a fetch by just passing that proper round, now you can see it's fetching out our data. So that's another amazing thing about the use hook is you can use it inside of an if statement, you can use it inside of a for loop, you can use it literally anywhere you want. And the really cool thing is if you had multiple use hooks inside of one component, or maybe you rendered out a bunch of components inside your suspense and they all had their own use hooks, the suspense is smart enough to wait for all of them to finish before it shows any of the data inside the suspense, which is really cool in my opinion. Another really interesting thing about this use hook is it doesn't have to be just used with promises. There's a lot of other things that they're wanting to add to the use hook. For example, right now, one thing that you can do is you can actually pass in a context. You're used to using the use context hook and then passing it in whatever context you've created. And this is going to work just fine, just like normal. But you can also do the exact same thing by passing your context to the use hook. And the reason you would want to do this as opposed to using use context is again, if you wanted to do it inside of an if statement or like a for loop or something else in that regard, you can do that with this new use hook while before you couldn't do that with use context. So it works exactly the same as use context, but it allows you to do it conditionally or inside of some other block. Now, if this hook has you excited thinking of all the possible things you can do, I highly recommend you check out my free React Hook Simplified course because there are tons of other hooks just like this one that'll blow your mind with what they can do. It's completely free. Link down in the description. I highly recommend you check it out. With that said, thank you very much for watching and have a good day.